Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood, and in this video we're going to address some questions that arose after my last video showing how to use Center Finder and overcoming the limitations of your lasers when you have no limit switches. So stay tuned, there's going to be a lot of good information in this video. After my last video, I had several comments about not seeing the links in the video and also not being able to use the tool because your laser doesn't have a home position or the lack of limit switches is limiting you on being able to use some of the features in Lightburn. Well, I'm going to show you in this video how to overcome those limitations. First, let's jump into my YouTube channel and show you what you're missing. When you look at the video itself, when it pops up, if you come right down below, here you see click on show more for video mentions and special links. And there's the show more. Click on show more and the first thing in that section is going to be the video mentions. I try to put any links that I have mentioned in the video here and when I can there'll be hyperlinks and if not it'll just be the address you can cut paste put in your address bar below that are all the previous video mentions I've done in different videos any coupons or savings that I might have available for you like the 6% discount on Monport the coupon code being hobo6 other cool links uh, to my patreon page if you don't uh, want to be a patron or it's just not in your budget to be able to support me monthly you can do a, a one-time donation on PayPal at PayPal me slash YouTube hobo then I share the links to a neat workbench that I got and a shelving unit that I got from Vever uh, the Atom stack and the uh, Comgro uh, information that I have and other links that I have shared in previous videos but several of you have mentioned that you didn't see the links to the dice that I had in that video. Well, that's where you're missing it. You just need to click on that show more to be able to see all the links from the video. So now with that out of the way, now you know where to find the links and where to find the links to support the channel. But let's jump into getting past your limitations with your laser. So now we're going to jump into the light burn. And I'm currently connected to my Comgro Z1, which does have limit switches. But let's show you how you can set up your laser without limit switches to be able to reproduce a job time after time and with consistency without limit switches. All right, so first thing, even though you don't have limit switches, start from, and this is something you'll, going to need to do anytime you're setting this up. Start from a home position with the your laser, even if it's a random home position due to no limit switches. So if you click on home and light burn, you can see the laser. I hope she's moving into its home position. The Comgro is down front left. The X tool is on the back left but you click on your home position and that's going to bring it to a relatively known position to start from and you're going to want to do that by hitting the home position command button in your laser controls do not move it there manually because the controller is not going to know that that's what's happened it doesn't recognize your physical movements as though the laser has been moved the controller doesn't recognize that change. Plus, using, especially when all your electrical connections are hooked up, whether you're powered up or not, you start moving that thing back and forth manually. The motors that's in those step, the, the, the stepper motors can gen, generate feedback and send a signal to 
the controller, which can do damage. I know they show you on the X Tool channel all the time where he just grabs that and moves it willy nilly. That's probably one of the worst things you can do with your laser, be it the X Fool or any other laser. Use your laser control functions, your move menu, and your laser menus to move your laser around your work bed. So once you've sent it to a home position, now you're going to want to move that laser to a position that you want the laser to be in at the end of the job you're doing. Now, me, I, on the, the Comgro, I like having it up and away. That way my gantry's not in the way and my air assist is not in the way. So I'll use my move laser position, which is the little pin right there. It's going to drop a pin in the work bed and send that laser up and out of the way. So I'm going to add a job. I'm going to add a, uh, some artwork here to the uh, work table just so that I can really drive a point home here. We're just going to grab a, a heart, add it to the project. All right. Now let's say this job was a job that I was engraving and I wanted to make sure that the laser was going to be in a position upon completion that it's out of the way. Now another thing that I'll do if I'm working with especially a, a rectangular piece of wood or a known fixed shape, I'll actually create a toolpath initially. Let's put that on a toolpath and I know that I am working with a piece of birch that is 11 inches and 13 sixteenths of an inch by 11 13 sixteenths. So that is the shape or the size of my plywood that I have positioned on the center of the work table. So my art project is going to be no bigger than so. But when I'm done, I will want that laser and the gantry to clear the area that I'm working with. So I'm going to select a position that's going to bring it outside that toolpath. So now the, the laser's out of my way. But she's also, and let's, you know, oh, didn't mean to do that. Go back up there. So like that. When I'm working with my, my material, I'm setting up my projects to minimize my amount of loss. So I'd have it closer to the edge of that work bed if I'm cutting this out or engraving something. When that job is complete, if I need to send it back out, if that laser has come to its home position, in this case the Comgross home position, it's all the way down here to the bottom left, and I need to resend it back out, that's that much more white space that's wasted time for that laser to get back into position. So if I've set my finished position to be here, it's close in proximity to the job, but it's also clear of my wood and my project, that if I need to resend it back out, I'm saving time. Now, if you're doing one job, that's not that big of a deal. But if you're working with a template or a pattern, like we were the other day when I did the dice, I had a template on the work page or on the yeah on the, the work bed cleared the laser of that and it just moved out of the way for me to go in and move the dice sent it right back in moved out of the way moved the dice went right back out you know so it was it didn't have far to go to transition to clear and restart clear and restart that saves a bunch of time instead of all of that jogging across all that white space so another reason to use this return to finished position and set it out of the way of your finished project. But now that we've got it here, you've set your finished position. In fact, you do that by opening your screwdriver and your wrench, making sure you have your return to finished position turned on that's turned on. 
And we'll move the menu up here. Let's see here. Laser. We're going to move this one up here so it's not blocked my, by my big head. All right. Now in your move menu controls, you have here set finish position. So we move the laser up here out of the way. That's where we want it to finish. So set finish position. Now that's where that laser is going to move to once that job is complete. And where this comes in extremely handy and overcoming the limitations of your laser without limit switches. Now you have set that to a known position that it started from and returned to. So if your engraving didn't come out as dark as you wanted it to or it didn't cut all the way through if you were cutting through plywood or cutting through wood, you can send it out from this position that you sent it from originally that is a fixed known position and not some randomly changing position home position. So this is why setting this is hugely beneficial to repeat jobs and time savings. So some of the viewers have already checked out and they're not going to pick up on this piece of information and they're going to go, this don't work. They have problems because they do a few things they shouldn't do. Now what you shouldn't do, you should not move the gantry and the laser physically by hand especially once you've set your finished position. The computer knows exactly where that's at. The controller knows that that's the point you want it to be in. But the moment you take and physically move that gantry by hand and move that laser head around, the controller and the computer don't recognize that movement and it thinks it's in the same position that the laser, la the computer last moved it to. So now you've screwed up the whole thing. So don't move your laser by hand. Use your computer's move controls to move the laser head around your work bed. If you reset your, your laser, if you power it down and bring it back on, and it, you don't have limit switches, and it goes to a random home position, well, the finished set position you set previously may be close, but it may not be exact either because your home position is not exact. So this might be something you need to do every time before starting a job, especially if you're doing jigs and going to be doing a dozen different things, a dozen different engravings of the same thing, then set that finished position prior to doing your job, then run it and do your 12 jobs, and you're going to have consistency on every one of those. So. Hopefully you found this informative. You now know where to find the links I mentioned in the videos. You now know where the links are for the support for the channel. If you can uh, become a patron, I greatly appreciate it. It helps me continue to keep this channel alive and going, buying materials to help teach you how to do these things. Um, if you don't want to become a patron, there is the PayPal, PayPal me, uh, hobo, uh, YouTube hobo. Oh, hobo. It's, all, it's all down there in the show more. Show more. And if you want to do a one-time thing and you don't want to do PayPal and you, you like your Google Pay, use the super thanks. But regardless, thank you for watching. I hope this has been informative. And until the next video, I'm out.